Hey guys, it's Kisera, and today I have for you my reading vlog and book talk for The Rainwall Chronicles by Robin Hobb. For those of you who don't know, The Rainwall Chronicles is the fourth series in The Realm of the Elderlings. So The Realm of the Elderlings consists of the Farseer trilogy, which is the first trilogy in the entire series, and that follows the Chivalry Farseer in The Six Duchies. Then we have the Lifeship Traders trilogy, which follows the Bingtown Traders, which is in a different country, a different city than The Six Duchies, which is far south of The Six Duchies, and it follows traders between Bingtown, the Pirate Isles, and Jamalia, and it does also have a little bit of the Rainwall Traders in it as well. Then we have the Tawny Man Trilogy, which I recently did a video on, which takes place after the Lifeship Traders Trilogy, but follows the events of the Farseer Trilogy and the characters of the Farseer Trilogy. So it also follows the Chivalry Farseer 15 years after the Farseer Trilogy ends. And then of course the four series we have is the Rainwall Chronicles, which is what this video is about, which follows characters within the Rainwalls, and then in the later books also gets a little bit into Bingtown and even the Chelsea state and then finally we have the fits in the fool trilogy which i actually haven't read yet i will be reading soon and i will be posting a video on that one soon but that one will follow up with fitz chivalry also after the tawny man trilogy i don't know how far into the future we'll find that out when i read it so if you haven't read the series i highly highly recommend it i absolutely love this series it's a high fantasy series that is very rich in world building and specifically character development is what makes me love this series so much so i highly recommend it if you haven't read it if you haven't been following my videos on it these are meant for people who have already read the series because vlogs may have some spoilers in it for all the series leading up to the current one so this vlog would potentially have spoilers for the farcia trilogy the life ship traders trilogy the tiny man trilogy and the rainwall chronicles so if you haven't read any of those i highly recommend going and reading them first and then coming back and watching this video so right now we're gonna go straight into the reading vlog and i will talk to you guys at the end. I finally started the Rainwall Chronicles with Dragon Keeper, which is the first book in the Rainwall Chronicles. I've read the first seven chapters and if I'm being honest, I'm a tiny bit disappointed by it. I think the main reason why I'm disappointed in it is just that it's not the Live Ship Traders series. Like, I wanted it to at least be similar to the Live Ship Traders trilogy because the Live Ship Traders trilogy were like my life earlier this year. Like, I absolutely love that series. And I just, I wanted to get the same feeling from the Rain Rock Chronicles as I did from the Live Ship Traders series because it, this is kind of like the, the sequel series to it, basically. I knew it was going to be different characters, but I was hoping we would get a little bit more of our, like, characters from the Live Ship Traders trilogy. Like, like I knew we weren't going to get Althean, Brashen, and Paragon and the other live ships, but I was hoping that we would at least get a little bit of Malta and Rain Cupris in it, and they're they're just not there at all. Like, or even just Selden in the book, but like they're just they're just not there. They're not part of the book. I feel like I got more of Selden in the um, Taunting Man trilogy than I'm getting out of Dragon Keeper so far. I mean, obviously only seven chapters in, so maybe they'll come in later in the series. But yeah, I was really hoping to get a little bit more of those characters in and they're not there. I do really like the world building here. I really like the descriptions of the city and like how they live in the trees and things like that. That's very interesting to me and I am starting to grow attachments to the characters. I'm still a little disappointed with that aspect of it because I remember just like picking up Ship of Magic the first time I felt an immediate attachment to Althea and the character that she was and even to Brashen and definitely even to Paragon which is weird because he's not even that relevant in the first book but I just had those immediate attachments to those characters which I'm not really getting in Dragon Keeper like Elise I I don't care about her like I want to care about her I feel like I should care about her she's in a horrible situation and I realized she chose that and she put herself in that situation but at the same time like like I feel bad about it like that aspect is actually kind of similar what happens in the like the conflicts in the life of traders at the same time I just want her to leave like that's all like I, I don't 
Like I don't have that attachment to her the way I did to Althea. And then there's Thymara. Thymara is actually growing on me. At first I didn't care for her very much but she's actually growing on me a lot and I think she might end up being one of my favorite characters in this series. So as of right now, the Right Now Chronicles are a little disappointment, but I've got three and a half books to go. So there's a lot for me to read before I can make any final decisions, but I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that the series will grow on me as it goes. Because I remember when I first picked up the Farsi trilogy, I really didn't like the first book, but like Fitz grew on me and I ended up really loving him as a character. So I'm hoping I'll feel the same way about these characters also. That's where I'm at right now. I'm, I'm hoping it gets better, but it's, it's not what I hoped. So I've made a bit of progress on Dragon Keeper. I'm on chapter 10 now and I'm a little bit happier with it because um, Elise booked passage on Paragon to get to the Rain Wilds. So I got to see Paragon, at, who is still the crazy ship that he was, the mad ship. He's fantastic. I love him. We got to see Althea and Brashen and their son. We didn't get their son's name, but like he's there. And like in chapter 10 right now, finally Malta came in. So like I feel a little bit better just because I'm getting those old characters, even though like it's from another character's perspective and I still don't like Elise because she doesn't like Althea and I don't like that she doesn't like Althea. And she keeps calling Althea the captain's wife, which, you know, Althea is not the captain's wife. Althea is basically the captain too, but yeah. So very interesting, but it it's growing on me. It's definitely growing on me. So I just finished Dragon Keeper by Robin Hobb and I didn't expect to finish it this quickly. Like I finished it a lot faster than I was expecting to. I'm honestly a little disappointed by it because it didn't feel like a full book to me. Like it didn't feel like a full book at all. I felt like I was reading like the first half of a larger book. And I realized like there are less main characters in this one than there are in, you know, the Live Ship Traders trilogy, but I don't know. I just felt like I was missing something in this one, like plot wise, especially like, I feel like we didn't get to a climax. Like, yes, the last scene was climactic in a way, but there was no resolution to that. That was just like the end and it just ended. And I wanted more from this book. I just wanted more from it. I did really enjoy what I read and I enjoyed it for what it was, but I wanted more from it. I do like Thymara. I really like Thymara. Sintara, I also like. I feel like they're gonna be a really great pair in the future. I did not like Hest, of course. I definitely didn't like Cedric, especially with the ending. Um, ugh. I just kind of wanted Cedric to die somehow. Like, I know that sounds horrible because he's not a horrible person. Like, he's a good person. But at the same time, like, what he was doing was wrong. It was wrong and I, I just kind of wanted him to die. But I have a feeling that somehow he's going to turn into an elderling. I don't know. I just have a feeling that later on in the series that's what's going to happen. And then I still don't like Elise. Like I want to like Elise but I'm not there yet with her. I feel like I might get there. Like sh the way she's thinking about it and like the thoughts that she had about Althea later on and how she actually really admires Althea and her relationship with Brashen. Like that part I really liked and I'm hoping she's going more in that direction but I don't know I don't like Elise yet I think she can grow on me though but yeah Dragon Keeper honestly was a disappointment to me I have Dragon Haven with me I'm not in town right now I'm out of town for a week uh, while uh, for work it's actually really close to my parents house so I'm at their house right now but I only have Dragon Haven with me I only brought the second one and I definitely should have brought more than that because I had expected to continue this till like Tuesday or Wednesday and I finished it super early it's Friday <laughs> so yeah I'm probably gonna finish Dragon Haven also while I'm here so we'll see how that goes goes but not my favorite of her books not my least favorite either I still like this one more than Assassin's Apprentice I'm still giving it only four stars so I'm giving it four stars which is the same that I gave Assassin's Apprentice it's kind of like a 4.25 in my head but I don't give quarter stars so yeah four stars for now we'll see how I feel about the other ones I'm hoping the other ones are better and that I end up liking this series more than I think I'm going to because right now it's a bit of a disappointment so it's Thursday July 25th I finally started Dragon Haven by Robin Hobb and I'm pretty far into it now I am this far into it so I'm about halfway through and so far I'm enjoying it a lot more than Dragon Keeper like I'm actually really really into it and I really really am attached to the characters now so I'm pretty excited about this right now I did borrow the audiobook because I'm driving as you guys see I have about an hour drive so I'm gonna be listening to the audiobook the entire time and I will check in with you guys and let you know what I think 
when I get home because it's it's really good right now. I'm really, really excited about this series. It is Friday, July 26th, and last night I finished Dragon Haven by Robin Hobb, the second novel in the Rainbow Chronicles, and I really, really enjoyed this one. This one was so much better than the first one. I think part of it is just like, I was finally attached to the characters. Like, I love Thymara, and I love the changes that she's going through here. By the end, she had wings, and I hope in the next one she learns to fly. Also, Sintara, of course. I hope she learns to fly also. And I actually really like Sintara in this one also, which is funny because Sintara is actually a carryover from the Life of Traitor series. In the Life of Traitor trilogy, she was Sisoria, and I really didn't like her back then, but I actually really like her in this book. So I'm excited to read the next one and see how much I like her in the next one. One thing that did make me really sad in this one, which kind of surprises me, is Greft. Because he's an unlikable character, but he was the type of character that I really wanted him to have a redemption arc. And I just felt like that never really happened. Like, it kind of happened. Like, there was a little bit of it there. You could like, feel that there was a little bit of a redemption arc there. But it never quite made it to the end, if you know what I mean. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Captain Kennet from the Lash of Traders trilogy, who I actually really hated, and he kind of got a redemption arc, but not really, and I didn't want him to have a redemption arc. Unlike Gruff, I actually didn't want him to have a redemption arc, and he had enough of one that it annoyed me, and then Gruff was like kind of the exact opposite. Like, I actually did want him to have a redemption arc, and he had enough of one that like, I felt the taste of it, but it didn't quite get there, and it, it kind of left me a little sour in that aspect, but everything else about this book I actually really, really like. I liked Cedric's sort of little redemption arc. I like his relationship with Carson. I think it's fantastic. Like, okay, I don't love Elise now, but I love her relationship with Leftrin, and I actually really like Leftrin. So Elise is growing on me. Thymara is amazing. I love Thymara. She's like one of my favorites. I don't really like Tats very much though. I think the conversation that they had where he was basically like, if you don't sleep with me, then like we shouldn't be together or anything like that. That really rubs me the wrong way. So I think that's why I really don't like cats. Maybe he'll grow on me and then we'll see. But so far, really, really enjoyed this one. I ended up giving this one 4.5 stars. It's Wednesday, July 31st. I finally started City of Dragons by Robin Hobb, the third book in the Rain Mog Chronicles, and I am so, so excited for this. I am about six chapters in now, a little over 100 pages. I'm getting the feelings from this book that I got from Ship of Magic. Like, this is more like that series than I was expecting it to, because like the first two books in the series really followed a very close set of characters. While this one, you're, we're getting back to Bingtown. We have like chapter six starts with a Malta point of view, which I didn't think I was gonna get a Malta point of view in the entire thing. So like, I'm so excited for that. I think I might end up liking this one a lot better than the first two, potentially. I do realize that this one was split into two books because City of Dragons and Blood of Dragons were supposed to be one book which like it makes me a little sad because I I know that the plot is not gonna be what I want it to be but at the same time like I like the little extra page count I'm getting from it being two different books so I don't know we shall see how I feel about it but so far I'm really enjoying this one a lot better than the other two and I did really like the other two so like not saying I didn't like the other two I did really like the other two but this one so far like I'm getting the old favorite feels back from this book that like I wanted to get. I'm getting those feels, so I'm really, really liking it. Dragons by Robin Hobb. There's one scene in here that I really, really love. It's probably one of my favorite Malta scenes ever, like including all of her Life of Traders scenes. It was a scene where she gave birth to her son and she's like on the floor of a brothel and the Chalcidians are basically, they, they wanna like take her son and sell him to the Duke of Chalcid. That whole scene was brilliant. I absolutely loved it. It was so, so well done. Other than that scene though, the Rainwalk Particles in general have been a bit of a letdown. This book is probably my favorite 
of what I've read so far, but it ended in a way that like, I didn't get any closure, if you know what I mean. Like I wanted to love this book. I wanted to love it so much, but I feel like it ended halfway. That's how I felt about the first book too. It ended like halfway through the story and there was like a whole nother half of the story that I was not getting from this book. So it almost feels like instead of this being four books, it's just like two books split in half. That's how it feels like for this series so far, which makes me a little angry, but I'm just gonna go ahead and pick up Blood of Dragons because I have it and like I don't have to wait a year for it like you would it when it was just being published so I'm gonna go ahead and read Blood of Dragons and hopefully the ending will be amazing and I will love it because I love the series so much and some of the things that happen in the series I cannot wait for Tintaglia to return to uh Malta and Rain cannot wait for that I'm so so excited also I have a feeling Tintaglia and Icefire are not gonna be together for long so I kind of want to see who they end up with in the end. I have a feeling Tintagli is going to go for Murkor, but I might be wrong about that. I might be completely wrong about that. I love Murkor, by the way, but I, I don't like Sintara and Murkor together. I like Sintara better with Kalo. This is weird. This is really weird. Anyways, enjoying it. Definitely. Oh, Thymara. I didn't even talk about Thymara in this one. I kind of don't like that she's um with Rapskull. It's kind of weird. It's kind of like really weird that she's with Rap School. I don't know that I wanted her to choose Tats because of all the things that Tats said in the last book. He, he rubbed me the wrong way completely, but I never liked Rap School. So I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't think that there is another option for her. So that's, that's I mean, there's a lot of options for her. Those two were kind of like the main players for her. So I don't know how I feel about that. <sighs> One thing I did notice was Calcid in general. I don't like it's so like such the bad guy. You know what I mean? One thing I liked about her books previously was that everyone's side was kind of taken into account. Like in the Lash of Traitors trilogy, Jamalia was kind of like the bad guy. But then we got to see like the Jamalians and their side of the story and like see that they weren't really the bad guys necessarily, but they just had a different perspective than the Bangtown Traitors. And I feel like Calcid in all of her stories kind of gets like the bad end of the stick if you know what i mean like they're always the bad guy i don't see that changing this time around like i don't see how that can change like i want to see that growth and development even though it's it's not a character it's like a whole country but you don't see that changing also same with hest actually i can almost see that there's going to be some character development with hest just with what went on at the end there which was just fantastic i like i liked hest's ending in here it was really good it was gross but really good at the same time so yeah Hus, that was good i don't know it feels like a completely different series almost than the first two books in the series which were just so much about finding kelsingra and the dragons and their keepers and then city of dragons is like a completely different book it's like i'm le reading the life ship traders all over again but like in a different era but at the same time like it ended so prematurely yeah so i'm giving this one four and a half stars I'm hoping that Blood of Dragons is gonna be so good that I can give that one five stars because it's the last chance the series has to get a five star for me. And none of her series that I've read so far have not gotten a, at least one five star. Let me try to think. The Farseer Trilogy, I gave the last one five stars. All of the Last Ship Traders got five stars from me. And the Tiny Man Trilogy, the last two got five star ratings from me. So yeah, I'm I'm a little, little hesitant because I don't want to give out a, a, a five star rating if I don't feel that way. But like, I want Blood of Dragons to be that good. Like, I want it to be that good. So I'm really hoping that it is. I'm gonna go start that one now and I will check in with you guys later. So it's Thursday night and I am almost done with Blood of Dragons. Like, I have a little over 100 pages left. Actually, less than 100 pages left. I have less than 100 pages left and <laughs> I started this book today. So yeah, I've been listening to the audiobook for most of this because I've been doing a lot of stuff today, but I was listening to the audiobook all day long. I didn't feel like picking up a different audiobook. I just felt like continuing on with this series. So that's why I did that and it's good. It is, it's so good. So yeah, I'm really, really enjoying this. Hess's story, where it is right now, Callow just ate him. Not fully, that didn't happen yet but he he's missing a leg now which i shouldn't be that happy about but it makes me really happy for a second there i thought he was going to get his way and i was going to be really angry but it worked out it worked out really well so yeah 
I'm really, really enjoying this. Ice Fire just came back. I'm interested in seeing how Ice Fire and Kalo get along. Just considering that Ice Fire is Tintaglia's mate and Kalo wants to be Tintaglia's mate. Like, I, I, I'm interested to see that fight go down because I, I, I have a feeling it'll be really interesting. I think in the series, my favorite character arc or like character plot line is still Malta's. Like, I don't know how that's possible that Malta is still like one of my favorite characters. Her story in the last two books has just been heartbreaking in all the right ways, and I'm really, really enjoying it. Selden's story is also really good. There was a little hint of Winthrow there for a second. My heart went out to it, and I didn't expect that because I didn't really like Winthrow that much in the Life of Trainers trilogy, but for some reason, like the moment his name was mentioned, I was like, how did I forget about Winthrow? So yeah, apparently I like Winthrow now, so now I have to reread the Life of Traders trilogy so that I can get all of those characters again because I definitely miss them. But definitely, definitely super excited to see where this ending is gonna be because there's not much left. Oh, I'm gonna be sad that it's over. My last like book on this side of this world. There's still the Fits in the Fool trilogy, which I'm excited excited for. Of course I'm excited for it, but I'm gonna miss this series because it's, it's very different than like the fifth side of the realm of the other links. It's very different. So I'm gonna miss it, but I, I'm still, I'm still excited for the ending. I'm hoping, I'm hoping this one ends up being a five star book for me. I think this one has the potential for it. Doesn't have as good character development as the Lash of Traders did but it has a lot of value in other places and I'm really enjoying it. Almost done. Almost done. Blood of Dragons by Robin Hobb. And I really enjoyed the entire, like I really enjoyed the entire novel. I really, really liked it. I love the way it ended. It didn't have as much character development as she has in like some of her other books, but overall I still really enjoyed it. One thing that kind of annoyed me a little bit is like with a lot of fantasy books, right? There's this big battle towards the end. And that's the same thing with this series. There's this there's this big battle towards the end, except she just stops right before the battle happens. And like, it goes to after the battle. And I was a little annoyed by that because I really wanted to see the battle. Like in the Life of Traders trilogy, she kind of does that too. But like, you get to see most of the battle before that happens. And it's just kind of like, we didn't have any characters really in that area when it happened. So it seemed more organic to the story in the Life of Traders. But in this one, like we had characters, we had other people in that area that would have lived through that battle. So it just kind of felt like, I don't know, I wanted the battle. Like I wanted the adrenaline rush and I didn't get it. Other than that though, really, really, really enjoyed this book. So unfortunately it's not gonna be a five star because wanted the battle so bad and I didn't get it. So it, it, it'll it be a four and a half star though. Four and a half stars, definitely really, really enjoyed it. And I love this series. There's only one trilogy left in the realm of the Elderlings and I'm trying to decide if I just wanna finish it or if I wanna drag it out because I could totally drag it out. But I've been reading these last few series really fast, like really, really fast. So I might just finish it this month. We shall see, I don't know, anyways. Really, really enjoyed this. I'll put all of my thoughts for the whole series together, film that a little bit later for you guys. Okay, so for the book talk portion of this video, I'm going to actually split it into two sections. The first section, I'm gonna be talking about the first two books, Dragon Keeper and Dragon Haven. And in the second section, I will be talking about the third and the fourth book, which is City of Dragons and Blood of Dragons. The reason I'm doing this is because, like I mentioned in the vlog, when I was reading it, I really felt like I was reading two books, not four books, but just two books that had been split in half. So that's why for me it just makes a little bit more sense to talk about those separately and they just felt like very different stories to me even though they were following kind of the same characters. So first we're going to talk about Dragon Keeper and Dragon Haven. I'm going to be honest. Dragon Keeper and Dragon Haven were a bit of a disappointment to me. They're one they're a lot shorter than Robin Hobb's usual books, but what really 
I think was the disappointment for me here. It lacked a lot of the character development that I would expect from Robin Hobb. So one of the biggest disappointments for me in these first two books was Greft because he had this interesting situation. He was a very prominent character and he had a lot of things going against him. His whole situation with Jess and the way Jess talked to him and he like was so influenced by that. I wanted him to like rise up out of that and learn to think on his own and be able to have like a good character arc that I could like. But then it just didn't happen. And I understand almost why it didn't happen. Like the world doesn't work that way. People like you make mistakes and you're not forgiven for them all the time. So like I understand that but at the same time I really wanted Gruff to have a good redemption arc and it got so close but it just wasn't there. That really kind of hurt me a little bit because I wanted that character development from him and I just never got it. I jumped right into characters so let's go on with other characters. So other characters that I think Thymara is an interesting character in these as well. I feel like she didn't grow at all in the first two books. Like I feel like she grew a lot in the third and the fourth book and we got to see more of her like understanding herself and being better happier with who she is but in the first two books I, I don't feel like there was any character development with her either. I loved her as a character. I loved like the situation that she grew up in and I loved that she was able to go off and be on her own and like be able to thrive in that environment but I didn't enjoy her development in the first two books. I also did not enjoy her relationship with Centara. I did enjoy Centara, but again, Centara doesn't really have very much development in the first two books either. Elise is another character. She's another main character that I really didn't care for at all in the first two books. Like I really did not like Elise in the first two books. I felt like that her situation with Hess, she was kind of asking for it because she went into it very naively. And even though she had all of the information up front, she thought she was getting something that she was not signing up to. Like she talked herself into something, even though like she had all the information to know that that wasn't what she was getting. And it just felt like it was just a really stupid decision to marry Hess. And I don't really understand why she did it in the first place. That being said, I did like her relationship with Lethtrin, which developed in these first two books. But overall, I didn't really enjoy Alice very much at all. One character I did end up enjoying in the first two books is Cedric, which is interesting. I didn't expect to enjoy Cedric in the first two books, especially in the first book. Like I hated him in the first book. I absolutely hated him, especially at the end of the first book when he tries to kill Repta. I wanted him to die. Like you probably saw that in the vlog, but like I hated him so much, but I learned to love him in the second book. Everything he does in the second book, especially like saving Repta and killing Jas and all of that, like that was in a redemption arc that I really really enjoyed. So like he's like one of the few characters in the first two books that I actually really like. Another character I forgot to talk about when I was talking about Thymara that really really disappointed me in the first two books was Tats. I really like I talked about it in the vlog but I was just really let down by his behavior and what he did with Jerd and just like coming back to Thymara and what he said to her at the end about how they probably couldn't continue on if they didn't have a physical relationship and all of that. I just it rubbed me the wrong way and I just did not did not enjoy it at all so there's that there's really not that much to say about I think these first two books because like literally all these first two books are is like plot wise just like going up the river and finding Kelswinger up that's what the first two books were which was interesting but I think they could have done all of that in one book it didn't have to be two books and I feel like the first book like I said was very premature the second book definitely fulfilled what I wanted the first book to fulfill but it just like it didn't work with for me as two separate books. The next thing I usually talk about is world building. I actually really, really love the world building, especially in the first book, which is surprising. I loved learning about Trahog and uh, Kasarik and the way that they live in the trees and stuff like that, I thought was incredibly interesting. I wish we could have spent more time in Trahog because I felt like that could have been really, really interesting. And I really enjoyed that. The last thing I wanna talk about, cause I generally don't talk about Robin Hobbs writing style because it's amazing. You guys know I love her writing. Of course I love her writing. I do wanna talk about Datozi and Eric though. Cause I never talked about it in the vlog, 
But as I was reading this, I was like, please let them get married. Please let them get married. Please let them get married. Because, oh my gosh, as I was reading it, like you can see them kind of falling in love through their letters to each other. And I absolutely love that. Like, I wish we could have actually met Tozi and Eric, but it's okay. Like, I enjoyed hearing them talk to each other through their letters. And I really enjoyed that they finally did get married. So yes, really, really enjoyed that. Switching over to City of Dragons and Blood of Dragons. I enjoyed these two a lot more than the first two books in the series, especially Blood of Dragons. Blood of Dragons was so good. I loved Blood of Dragons. I only didn't give it five stars because of that one battle scene. Like if I had gotten that battle scene, it would have been like such a perfect book. But because I didn't get that battle scene, I couldn't give it five stars. Like I just couldn't do it. Like I wanted that battle scene so bad and it just didn't happen. So yes, anyways moving on let's talk characters so we get a lot more of our favorite characters at least my favorite characters in these books than we did in the other books so of course i'm gonna start with malta malta's storyline in these books is so good i loved malta's storyline in these books like i don't know she just grows as a character for me with every book like i didn't expect to get malta's point of view at all in the series so it was just like a breath of fresh air when I finally got Malta's point of view and even Rain's point of view I love Rain by the way like what she went through in City of Dragons the Chalcidians with the Chalcidians and them trying to kill her as she was trying to give birth like that is just such a Malta thing to happen like she would be the only person that this happens to <laughs> but she like she did that so well like I did not expect that from her she like sometimes I still think of her as that like sniveling little spoiled rich girl that was in Ship of Magic but like she has grown so much and like every time she's in a scene I just feel so proud of Malta I don't know like she's just one of my favorite characters of all time just because of the way that she's written in these books and of course the second in Blood of Dragons and all of the emotional distress that she has to go through because her son is not correct inside and having to deal with that like so well done i really really enjoyed it like i said earlier by mara really grew on me even more in city of dragons and blood of dragons i didn't have an issue with her not choosing between rap school and cats mostly because I can understand why she wasn't sure which one she wanted. Like you can see both of them like Tats is obviously the better choice, but like the things that he said were very concerning. So that's why I can, un I can understand why she didn't choose him. Rap school again was, I don't think ever really a choice for her because they were more friends than anything. And then the whole thing that happened to him with Teletor, I really did not enjoy that. I, uh, I didn't enjoy it at all. It kind of felt like in the Tawny Man trilogy, before Fitz got like all of his memories back, it kind of felt like the opposite was happening to Rap School. He was getting all these memories from this other person. So he was becoming something that was not himself. And I didn't enjoy that aspect at all. Carson and Cedric, I love them together. They're so good. I love them together and I don't really have very much other to say about that. I love Alice and left them together. I still don't like Alice as a character, how bossy she was with Cal Singra and how she kind of owned it even though like she's not an elderling. I know that's it sounds horrible to say but like she's not and the way she was acting towards the actual elderlings it, it just it just rubbed me the wrong way and I still don't like Alice like I still don't like Alice I want to like Alice I really really want to like Alice but I still don't like her like it didn't happen for me I thought Centara was gonna be my favorite dragon because we follow Centara throughout the entire thing but Tintaglia is fantastic I love Tintaglia so much oh my gosh I love her so much and I love the relationship that she has with Malta and Rain, even though like it's not really much of a relationship, but at the same time, like she knows where to come home when she needs it. Like, so that's why I love Tintaglia. I love that she ended up with Kalo. Like, I don't even like Kalo, but I like that she's not with Ice Fire, which is weird because you would think that we should want her to be with Ice Fire because the whole point of the Tawny Man trilogy was for her to be with Ice Fire, but now she's not. So we'll see how that goes over in the Fits and the Fool trilogy. Maybe. We shall see. 
But yeah, I enjoyed that. I love that Thymaro got to fly. Uh, and that scene where like Tats is chasing her as Murkowar is chasing Sintara. Um, precious, so precious. I absolutely loved it. And oh, that feeling that she had when Tats turned away to run back and jump over like the ravine or whatever it was, that that was heartbreaking. Cause it was just like one of those moments where like everything, all of her like insecurities and self doubts just like came up in that moment. And then you see him running back to jump over the ravine and it was just like, oh, he's there for her. It felt so good. I really enjoyed that. What else? The Duke of Chow said, okay, that was an interesting plot line. I kind of wish we had that throughout the entire series and not just, I think it only happened in Blood of Dragons. It was definitely really interesting with Chasim and the Duke and Selden. Oh, I felt so bad for Selden in this book. Like, I'm glad he got rescued. Don't get me wrong, I'm glad he got rescued. It annoyed me that him getting rescued overshadowed the battle, but I'm glad he got rescued. And his like sort of relationship with Chasim was fantastic, really enjoyed it. I am pretty happy that there's a duchess in Chalcid now. I'm pretty happy about that. I'm excited to see how that goes down in the Fits in the Pool trilogy because that's very different for Chalcid, which is pretty much known for women being second citizens and things like that. I'm hoping that they eliminate the slave trade somehow because that should be interesting, but yes. Really enjoyed that aspect of this novel and really wish that we'd gotten a little bit more of that in the first two books. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I really do, oh, Hest. I completely forgot about Hest's storyline in these books, but I really enjoyed Hest in these books. Like, I hated him. Obviously, I hated him. But, like, the things that happened to him and the way, like, he tried to do things and it just didn't happen. I love that about this book. How it ends with him and Kalo and... Mm. It was so perfect. It felt like that moment in the end of Ship of Destiny with Kyle Haven just like completely ignoring Althea and then getting shot. That's how Hest and Kalo felt like to me and it was just a wonderful moment and I absolutely enjoyed it. That makes me sound ruthless, but it was fantastic. Overall for me, the series is like a four and a half star series. So I gave Dragon Keeper four stars, Dragon Haven four and a half stars, City of Dragon four and a half stars, and Blood of Dragons four and a half stars. Solid series. None of them were quite five stars for me because like I said, I wanted a little bit more from the series than I ended up getting. But overall, I really, really enjoyed it. If you have anything to say about what I mentioned, please let me know down in the comments because I would love to discuss it with you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. I post videos frequently in this channel, so consider subscribing. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up to support my channel. All social media links are in the description down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.